Good to see you, my friend. Good to get you back on Real Vision. First time you haven't been in a bar in a long time. I know. I'm over in Grand Cayman at my house over here. It's sad without the rum behind me. <laughs> Listen, I wanted to catch up with you because there's so much going on. I don't even know how to get my head around it. And the good thing about you and I, we're both macro. We think of things in that kind of top layer of what's going on. So I don't even know where to start, but let's just start with the main, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum. What's your view on this right now, where we are, how this is developing? You know, 10 days ago, I don't know, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had two small developments, which weren't small, and one big development that I think symbolically put together uh, was a monster, monster deal. And what were they? Within a week, both Walmart, largest retailer in the world, and Amazon, largest online retailer in the world, put up help wanted signs. Help wanted. We need some crypto people fast. Right? Think about that. The two biggest players in the world said, we give up. We need to, we need to be part of the party. We see the future changing in payments, in digital art and how brands are created, right? You had that, the same time Congress tried to sneak in regulation, you know, through the infrastructure bill, that was the White House, Janet Yellen, Gary Gensler, wanting to say, hey, we're a little worried about where this is going. We want to be in control. And they had no idea that the crypto community would roar like they roared. It was that, amazing. You know, connected people in our world, the, the Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey tweeting guys like me on phone calls with senators. And there are lots of us, let alone the 60 million American crypto owners who started, you know, blanketing their their, fo their uh, phone machines with uh, with angry bills. And so they said, wait, but there is a constituency, a really loud one that we need to pay attention to. And so. I put those things together, even though they're not connected. And it was like the coming of age moment. We now, there's, the, the industry has been de-risked. It's an industry. It's going to be an industry for a long time. We are going to rebuild part of the financial architecture, if not all of the financial architecture, but at least part of it on a blockchain-based system, right? IP, creativity is going to be on a blockchain system. The kind of the the real promise of this whole movement was that if the internet made information free, blockchain is going to allow information that shouldn't be free not to be free. <laughs> you know, and so it's the internet of value in lots of ways. Um, that's a huge transformation. And I think the world just woke up. And so, you know, you see what's happening in prices of NFTs, of DeFi, of of level one protocols, of all of this stuff. It's almost, I tweeted today to Jim Cramer, it's almost like we hit the point of no return in the virality of this. Yeah, because I've, I've been looking at, you know, because I try and step back because you struggle otherwise because there's so much noise. I step back and look at the growth of the number of users of crypto, digital asset space. It's growing at 113% a year. It's twice the speed of the internet. It's the fastest growth of any technology in all humanity. And as you said, we've hit a tipping point in the last few weeks. You know, I learned, uh, yeah, I, mean, I shouldn't say a hard lesson because you can't get mad that you don't catch everything. And one of the things I've been just attacked online for uh, recently was uh, Cardano, right? I, months ago said, I don't understand why it's the third, you know, highest market cap. I couldn't find developers in the communities that I talked to that were using it. It seemed like a ghost chain, and but I was surprised by, by how fervent and angry their community was. You know, I didn't get death threats, which I've gotten in the past, but I got all kinds of just, you know, mockery, mean, mean tweets. And then recently, I did another tweet. Well, that was a mistake. And you know, five hundred comments instantly. And and what I realized is. And Cardano, you know, listen, I, it was a buck 40, now it's 270. And so, like, I'd have been smarter to go long. And uh, luckily, I didn't go short. I just didn't participate. What I realized was while Bitcoin as a store of value has this big story and a big community and its institutional buy in, I really think is going to be here forever. There are these other communities that we might not know the people who are participating in them, 
but it's a huge world out there with seven and a half billion people, mostly connected to the internet. And somehow Cardano has a community that sees it as some hybrid between Bitcoin and Ethereum, gonna be the next Ethereum, right now doesn't do anything. Uh, and so I got no idea if it'll succeed. I don't buy it because I don't see NFTs being built on it, DeFi being built on it. But, you know, nothing needs to be built on Bitcoin for Bitcoin to work, right? It's a store of value. And so we have this, this spectrum of store of value to utility. And is being a store of value a utility? And who, who am I to be the judge of, of what people care about? Enough people care about Cardano that it's worth, you know, $100 billion. And look, we're seeing this with Doge. I mean, I spotted this a while ago. It's like it's got this vibrant community, but no use case. So Mark Cuban holds his hand up and says, fine, you can, use, you can buy Dallas Mav stuff. And then Elon's saying, well, you know, I might use this for something because it's got the massive user base. So if you bring a massive user base and you start building applications on it, then you've got a network. And this is fascinating because, you know, we're not used to seeing things this way around. Yeah, no. And so we'll see. I'm, you know, the Cardano thing I, I, I haven't given in, in, nor do I think I will buy it given my, you know, having missed this huge run and, and my bias against wanting to be part of communities that I think have long term utility. Um, but it's, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, they can pull something off. You know, I, I said it feels like a cult. Well, all of this stuff, <laughs> investing is becoming this. It's it's like British soccer teams. You know, they put gates between, you know, Chelsea and Man U so they don't go to war. That's right. Uh, I don't think it's healthy, but it's interesting. Yeah, but I do think, you know, I've been talking a lot about this. The power of community overall in the whole space is what is going to drive crypto because we're going to see adoption within communities of different types of things. And we, and that's what the NFT space is now. It's like bored apes versus... Look at the art blocks community, right? I mean, there, there was a... One of my guys, Richard, tweeted twice about, you know, people donating back to other community members, you know, pieces of uh, art that were worth, you know, half a million dollars. You know, hey, just giving it back to the artist because he's done so much good stuff for our community. I mean, it's a really sweet community. But you talk about... People then wanted to buy into that community. It's the most vibrant community in, in, in NFTs, I think. So how do you deal with just the layer ones? Let's talk about yeah stuff like Solana and stuff. Looks like it's doing really well. You've seen Kadana. You said you kind of missed that. How do you deal with, okay, what are the ones you're going to focus on? Uh, so listen, I, I have a big team, both from venture, you know, early stage venture guys that we're, we, we get in on. To trading team that you know will will market making some of these things, uh, my own network of people, and so I still have the belief that Ethereum has such a huge lead that it is going to be core infrastructure. And so we have a big Ethereum position. I have made probably more money this year on Luna than almost anything else. Uh, I bought Luna really early. Uh, I was wildly impressed with the CEO. <laughs> Not that he's allowed to be a CEO, no, but the founder. Dow, yeah, uh, right with Dow, yeah. And I've just watched that community grow, mostly because it was a real use case originally with the payment uh, app, right? With the Chai payment system, you're, you're using it in Korea to, to do things. It was, in some ways, the first guppy that jumped out of the swamp and became a frog, <laughs> um, you know? And he's done an amazing job building that community. So for me, it's been, who's driving that those communities? And you can't catch them all. We've got Polkadot, we've got some uh some um cosmos uh and you know but in one way those bets get very correlated and so you can look at a versus b and one who's breaking out and kind of trade the crosses you know it's like trading when it, when there's a dollar bull market you can still trade euro yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um and i don't i'm not smart enough but i don't think anyone is to know in 10 years what that level one fabric that we build on top of is going to look like you know is store chain got to connect them hey if you like this clip be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto it's 100 free sign up now